uh, then we will invite so that we don't get in, you know, into being very late. We will invite uh, Abhishek Anand and Ekta Rose to present their papers on legislation and judiciary. They oh, really? come from Amity yes. University in Lucknow, uh, Uttar Pradesh, India. Please, the floor is yours. And again, I will signal when timing is close and you have one minute left. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Diana. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Ekta Rose. My co-author's name is Abhishek Anand. We both are working as an assistant professor in the uh, Amity University, that is Amity Law School Department of Law uh, from Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, uh, India. Okay, as my topic suggests that ma'am has all, uh, already elaborated upon it, but said the topic, the laws, legislation and judiciary, the gender bias in India. So, uh, Dr. Sumana Biswas, Ravina Kohli and Neetu uh, Kanchanani have already talked about the what is the gender biasness, a little bit about it. But I would be leading with, I would be dealing it with a different perspective that is with the laws and the legislation and the role of judiciary which is there in India. Now, as we understand the, what is the gender gap, the gender gap is basically refers to the unequal treatment or the opportunities which is afforded to the both the genders of the society, that is the male and the female on their gender base. Now, it was in the 20th century when this gender uh, sorry, or well, you can say that the feminist movement approached and people were aware about, the, uh, the women were aware about this feminist approach. And early, earlier to then that women were not so much aware about this feminist approach and on what were the atrocities they were facing, what were the atrocities they were facing uh, on daily basis. So it was in the, uh, it, it was mid 20th century, it uh, highlighted. Now, clubbing upon, clubbing upon to the history and I'll directly move on to the laws which are there in India. So uh, the the legislation which I find out that still, uh, still are uh, based upon the gender bias, that is they are not able to bridge the gap between the gender bias. And basically you will find the legislation which are based upon the guardianship, Marriage, divorce, and inheritance, which I which uh, which highlights that still a gender gap persists in. Now, starting with the Hindu Succession Act, uh, not going full in detail of the Hindu Succession Act, which would, would take a lot and lot of time. I would just highlight one or two points about that: that a woman cannot cross uh, pass a uh, property of differently than a man when she dies without a will. That means that if a if a woman dies without a will, the property would go to her husband's family, whereas if the husband dies without a will, even then the property would go to his family. So there lies the difference. Then coming upon to the Parsi inheritance laws, the Parsi inheritance law says that when a when a, whenever there is a a marriage between a Parsi and a non-Parsi. So for example, if there is a marriage between a Parsi man and a non-Parsi woman, so non-Parsi woman, after the death of a Parsi man, would not be given the right of inheritance in that particular family. That is, she would not be receiving the properties of the pro of the husband if the husband dies. Now, coming upon to the Prohibition of Child Marriage Act, 2006, the the pro the Child Marriage Act 2006 only prohibits the child mandate. It does not say that the child marriage is illegal. Whereas if it is not making the child marriage as illegal, then it is making this sexual intercourse between the minors as legal and which may be leading it to the rape as well. Where, as when we go on to the uh, Indian Penal Code, Indian Penal Code is the Penal Code of India, which punishes any, which punishes anybody getting into a sexual intercourse, whether it is a consensual or a non-consensual one, with under a person who is under eighteen years of age. Even then, that would lead to rape. So there are two contradictory things that is, which is leading to the uh, pro uh, prohibition of child marriage act, and as well as the the rape limit age limit which is set for for the rape victims now the second most important the very most important thing and the topic of debate which is going on right now in india what is the legal age of marrying a man and a woman so 
in India, the legal age of marrying a man is 21 years and for women, it is 21 years. Now, coming upon to the Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act 1956. Now, this act fails to recognize females as the natural guardian of the child. It recognizes in a very elaborate section three, it says that elaborately says that the male or the father is the natural guardian of the child. Now coming upon to polygamy, the polygamy is strictly prohibited in India, but being a special status given to Goa, it says that you can practice polygamy on two conditions. One of the conditions is that that is if a woman is not able to give a birth to a child before 25 years of age. And secondly, if the woman is not able to give the birth to a male child before 30 years. And now, if, now everyone knows women does not have to play any role in giving the birth to a child, whether it is a female or a male, but the, there is a lacuna in this particular law. Now, coming on to the divorce laws, the divorce laws, whenever there is a right to divorce, yes, you can seek a divorce, a woman has a right to seek a divorce, but a man, woman does not have the any other right other than getting a maintenance. What does that mean? You cannot claim a property. For example, if I am getting a divorce, I cannot claim any of the property rights in my husband's property. So only the thing I'll be getting is the maintenance and that to maintenance would be coming from his salary. Okay, now coming up on to the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. Now, this Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act prohibits abortion more, abortion for which is more than a 20 weeks old okay but it okay we can say that medically it is okay but what about there are abortions in exceptional case can't these rape victims be con considered as an exceptional case they can be considered an exceptional case because the act fails to recognize the mental or the psychological trauma which a woman would be going through or the child which was taking birth after a rape and that the society would be pressuring on him would be facing on him. Now, Concluding the grand norm, now coming up onto the uh, uh, grand norm, which is the constitution of India, the grand norm is considered, which is the according to the, you cannot go against them. The constitution of India tries to uh, give the rights to the women and ba ba balance the gender biasness, which is there. So according to article 14, it says equality before the law and article 15, which says that it gives powers to the state to establish particular arrangement for the woman for in a, uh, sorry, ex uh, 15 clause 1 expressly forbids the sex-based discrimination, whereas 15 clause 3 works as an exception, it says that you, that, sorry, the state has the power, uh, that is enabling power to make a special laws for the woman. So, and Article 51, which is the director principles of the state policies, it directs the state, that is the government, that is India, to make such laws which favors the woman or brings, do not bring uh, women to the superior uh, position than to the inferior one. Now, a major amendment has been done in Constitution of India. That amendment is known as the 73rd and the 74th Amendment, which was done in the year 1993. And what does uh, that amendment says? That amendment says that there uh, should be 33.33 percent. That is one third reservation should be provided to the women in the local bodies. That is during the panchayats and the local bodies elections there. So. The government has the, the Constitution of India has reserved 30 the one third seats for the women in India. Now, directly now coming on to the concluding points that is the how is our judiciary helping us? So judiciary plays a very important role. For example, for interpreting the laws and filling up the lacunas which are there in the law. So due to positivity of time, how much time do I have? Actually, you should conclude, please. Okay, 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 fine, fine, fine. So due to positivity of time and my paper, I have elaborated various cases, but to uh, positivity of time, mm -hmm. I'll just elaborate, I'll just come on, come on to the very latest case which took place in a few months back. That is, was X versus the principal secretary health uh, and family welfare, where 
the woman right to abortion was given to the unmarried woman, thus expanding the uh, scope of the medical termination of pregnancy act under section three clause B. Whereas I discussed right now that the pregnancy uh, medical termination of pregnancy act it is not permitting us to get the abortion of the rape victims or uh, uh, following by uh, following twenty weeks more, but. This after this case, the victims can take support of this case and proceed for the abortion. Now, coming upon to the uh, the very latest case that in India, in India there is a process of two finger testing. What is two finger testing? Two finger testing is the process where the doctor used to insert two fingers into the vaginas of the females to test whether the uh, whether the victims have suffered rape or not. So there is a latest judgment which says that state of Jharkhand versus Shailendra Kumar Rai, it says that uh, the CGI, the, our CGI that is uh, uh, Chandrachur, says that we can uh, we need to curtail down this two finger test as this two finger test is ultra virus of the constitution as where a woman is sexually active she can be also raped. So. A woman sexually active can also be raped. So there are numerous cases, uh, numerous cases where the women have, uh, through with the help of judiciary, the women have tried. Uh, uh, women have held a. Uh, is there something? Yeah. Women you have should really conclude. It's over. Yeah. Last last one minute now. Huh. Yeah. The no, women... you have to finish, please. Yeah. Okay. What women is have... the final view on? So women have, uh, women have helped, uh, judiciary has helped the women to have the superior position uh, a lot where the judiciary has tried filling up the gaps to the cases which are coming to end. So just law and judiciary won't help the women coming status superior. It was us as a society also to come up with it. For example, an example which you can say that the women's participation in the field of legal, that is, if I will not be permitted from my family to represent a legal representative in any of the field, how is this? So there's no such law which is going to implement on my family. It is the society which has to upbring them. Thank you so much. If any of the questions, I would welcome that.